Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Janet H. Swinney's The House with Two Letter Boxes. So this was sent to me by Isabel Kenyon of Fly on the Wall Poetry Press, uh, which also publishes fiction. Um, and uh, yeah, the copy I have it does have a couple of typos on the blurb, but that's just because this is like the advanced copies, so that will be getting fixed for the final version, so don't you worry about that. However, in the uh, interest of amusing myself, I'm going to read you the blurb as it stands, then we're going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So. Dane reads. Set in the northeast of England, these are dark, dangerous, and witty tales of a close knit immunity. Here, neighbours have sharp tongues, suspicious minds, and hidden talents. This is a place where money doesn't grow on trees and where women and girls enjoy a damn sight more than anyone should have to. But kindness can still come from unexpected quarters. And I would say that's actually a pretty good summation of what the stories have in common, you know, because they are quite a varied lot. Um, they're very much grounded in place and also uh, to a certain extent in time as well. The first story, Slipping the Cable, I don't actually have a huge amount to say about it, but it was just a very classical take on the short story. Um, there's like love elements to it, but it kind of sees what happens when love goes away, you know, um, which, which then I enjoy. I also noticed throughout this, and maybe it's just because the um, like the proper nouns of the brand names are generally uh, italicised, but there's a lot of them. So here we have like Elastoplast, Thermos, and uh, Humber Hawk, all name dropped on the same page. You get it a lot for like sweet names and stuff like that. Uh, and actually, it worked really well to again establish this sense of time and place. Um, kind of Stephen King did it in 112263. He was talking about Bausch and Lomb binoculars, and I thought that was great because. Not only do, did Bausch and Lomb make binoculars at the time, they were one of my clients, and they no longer do make, make binoculars. So like, to a modern day person, Bausch and Lomb are actually known for, uh, for making um, uh, contact lenses and glasses. So I just thought it was really cool that he'd done his research there and grounded it again in the products of the time. And uh, you can tell that this author's done the same, you know? And we get a lot of this sort of everyday sexism, especially because at the time, um, it's the first story is taking place during the Ruth Ellis trial, who was the last woman to be hanged in England. So I think that's like late 50s. And um, we get this, which is very sort of typical of the attitudes of the time. Men's lives are different from ours, her mother went on. Nobody can say a minor has it easy. It's their job to go out and bring home the bacon, and it's our job to make it easy for them when they do. If they give way now and then under the strain, it's hardly surprising. She slipped four more scones off the griddle. If a woman had a dollar for every time she'd had a clout, most of them would be as rich as Croesus by now. Yeah, just casual wife beating, you know? So moving on here to tenterhooks. I just thought this was a really interesting depiction of, um, well, you'll see, but of childbirth, essentially. Not the process of childbirth, but the effect that it has on the body. Mrs. Leggett looked at Blanche askance. The wear and tear of childbirth was still visible on her. She had the front of her dress unbuttoned, with the pallid flesh of her breast fully exposed despite her best efforts with the writhing infant. It was clear that she wore no petticoat, and a clutch of what looked like hairpins poked from the armhole of her sleeveless bodice. She moved, one, she moved from one foot to another, with the obvious discomfort of one who still had difficulty sitting down. Mrs. Leggett considered her unsavoury appearance. She didn't think it was decent standing there in broad daylight with everything on show. Still, it was very close indoors, and no doubt Blanche needed a breath of air after her days in hospital. She decided to overlook the transgression on this occasion. So on to Mr. Singer's Empire, which has got a story about the Singer sewing machines in it. So what I particularly enjoyed about this, <laughs> someone's mum gets angry and she goes, Bugger and blast, damn my skin to France. Um, and yeah, basically the sewing machine repairman comes around and he's like, if you have sex with me, I'll fix it. Otherwise, fuck off. And it's just like, great. Uh, I'm not complaining about the stories, by the way. I'm complaining about societal attitudes, especially at the time this was set. Uh, then we have the house with two letterboxes, which is the titular story. Um, quite moving, that one. I didn't have anything out, though. And uh, then we have the army on the move. And I just love this little part of the story. This is probably one of my favourite bits of the whole collection. Just to clarify as well, um, when the guy asks for a quarter, he's asking for a quarter ounce. Uh, so a man comes in and asks for a quarter of licorice and aniseed bonbons. Nan sticks her hand into the jar, draws out a fistful of sweets, thrusts them into a paper bag and twirls the corners. How, the man says. He glares at the appliance that stands at Nan's elbow. What do you call them? Scales, she says. Well, I'll be having them properly weighed out then. Nan unfurls the bag and deposits the sweets into the pan of the scales. She scrutinises the dial, takes three sweets off the pan and drops them back into the jar and screws the top on. She slides the rest back into the bag. All right for you now, Petal, she says. The man snarls and snatches the bag off the counter. Shot himself in the foot there. So we get this little exchange, which is exactly the way I think. Remember what John the Baptist said, Brian? Brian begins to read as though he's just learned how to do it. 
I baptize you with water for repentance, but the one who comes after me is mightier than I, and I am not fit to take off his shoes. Matthew 3, 11 and 12. What translation is that? asked Mr. Hardy. The New English Bible, says Brian. Because I prefer the Revised Standard myself. Because they wouldn't have had shoes, says Eric. What? says Mike. In them countries, they wouldn't have had shoes, they'd have had sandals. If you wanted to be authentic, like. Also, while we're at it, Jesus wasn't white. Okay. Angel of the North, which for Americans is a big old statue. Um, I'm near Gateshead, I think. Uh, we get this quote, um, may or may not be true, I don't know, but it's a good quote. Didn't Gandhi say something once about the dilemma of how to pass your time on Earth? That whatever is yours to do, you must do to the best of your ability. Doing nothing is not an option. That's kind of how I try and live my life, to be fair. And we get this, which uh, these are like British gambling sites. Have any of you tried this? Our oh, Jeff downloaded Wink Bingo and Paddy Power Casino for us and he mind they're great. She says the word downloaded as though the two parts are newly minted and come in separate compartment. Now that's the story about somebody getting helped by a bus driver and then the bus driver is not, he's reprimanded for helping someone basically. One for the off. Very short one, now what to say about that. Black boy winning. Um, this one's pretty dark, uh, like trigger warnings for like lynching and things like that. I um, mean, it's interesting to have a British story about lynching as well. So we get this, um, but Ned doesn't get down. And what happens next leaves him with nightmares for the rest of his life. Still in the depths of sleep, he sees the sweat glistening like coal tar on the man's body. Still he sees his torso, overworked and underfed, with muscles only where it matters to their masters. Still he's haunted by those moments when their eyes met, and he saw there the same desperate terror that pervades his own soul. Once the whole thing is over, Ned shits himself. Um, and there's also a bit in this story about somebody at school who doesn't want to get picked on by the teacher because he doesn't know the answer. So he tries to put his hand up to be like caught in a throng of people because he knows the teacher will pick people who just don't engage with the class. And unfortunately she then picks him and he has no idea what the answer is. I thought it was quite relatable for a certain type of person. I mean, I always did know the answer and never put my hand up because I was an introvert. And then they'd ask me and I'd be like, here's your answer. Can you leave me alone now, please? And this is just a sentence that I think is really beautifully written, especially considering the subject matter. It's um, done well. Mrs. Doggett had come out without her dress, the impressive aureoles of her untethered breasts jigging against her satin petticoat. So I just, that sentence by itself, just really, really like that. So yeah, Janet H. Swinney, The House with Two Letterboxes. This just continues a the theme really with um, the books that I've been sent, the short story collections by Fly on the Wall in that basically it's notoriously difficult to get a publishing deal for a short story collection it's notoriously difficult to market and sell them and just collections like the ones that fly on the wall are putting out are great reminders of why we shouldn't let the story, short story collection die this is a very valid art form this is just really well done pretty strong four out of five i would say and um yeah if, if any of this has caught your fancy definitely go ahead and check this out i believe it's out in december so it's probably not out yet at the time that you're watching this video, but you can add it to your wish lists and pre-order and all, all that good stuff. So yeah, there we have it. That's what I made of The House with Two Letterboxes by Janet H. Swinney. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.